Ju 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 ju. Ka 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 ka. Ro. P. That is that for the 2023 Six Nations, everybody. Ireland dominant. France a close-ish second, and then the rabble. My poor, poor rabble. Right. Let's look at every team's goods and bads. Italy bad. It's all well and good running fancy plays from your own 22. It's fun to make the other team's 13 look silly. But once you get that line break, there's still 60 meters to go. Unless you're passing the ball to Rico or Louis, you're not scoring very often. It's really hard to play modern rugby without a proper exit strategy. Ask me how I know. Come on, ask me how you think I know this. Italy good. More caps for all these young boys. Capuozzo, the Canoni and Brex are all looking better and better. Italy's defense also looks to be improving and they can put lots of phases together. Reduce the insanity, increase the game management and Bob's your mother's brother. Wales bad. The anti-rugby team. Wales scored the fewest points this year. They ran for the fewest meters and only the loco Italianos kicked for fewer meters. They even gave away the most penalties and had the second worst defense by only two points. It's all a little rough reading for a team this experienced. Wales good. Their experience. Talupe Faletau, Adam Beer, Justin Tipperick, the list goes on. This team is brimming with talent and full of championship winners. They can get back to the top with time and some other fixes. As before, I am not into dogpiling on Welsh rugby right now. Their problems start way off of the rugby field and only when they fix that will we get motivated and well-paid players back in red. England bad. Who are these blank faces in blank clothing? What is their identity? Do they play a chaotic, fast attack style, manipulating defenses over multiple phases with running and kicking? Or do they employ a big old pack of ball carriers sitting behind a massive kicking game that pressures teams into mistakes? All and none of the above. England need to pick a game and then pick the cattle to execute it and then damn all the journalists to heck. England good. Hmm, there's maybe two games of It's All Eddie's Fault Left. Freddie Stewart is still there, a great fullback that complements a great kicking game. Ollie Lawrence could become a very good 12 in a Tigers style game plan, eh? Eh? It's shape being Scottish! That final step, that last agonizing little lift to leave the 6 to 4 group and join the 1 to 3 conversation. And I think that step is paved with depth. I don't know if a country with only two fully professional squads has the production line to reach those lofty heights. They have an incredible 1 to 15. It's that 16 to 23 that's always the issue. Scotland, good. Have you watched them play? When that pack is working and White and Russell are buzzing, it is a thing of beauty. Keep defending and attacking the way you have for 60 minutes, Scotland, and then just find a bench somewhere to take it to 80 minutes. No, not there. Uh, France bad. Not much to complain about for France. Maybe a bit of fatigue could be an issue. A tired 7 out of 10 start to the championship meant that they could not match Ireland in Ireland. But who can? Let's just hope their stars are all kept healthy and well rested before the big show in September. France, good. The hell am I supposed to say? Good defense, guys. Nice attack, Oaks. Get the fuck. It's Antoine. It is always Antoine. I will be clockwork oranging my kids to watch highlights of him one day. Please keep him healthy for September, rugby fates. Otherwise, just delay the World Cup. Island, bad. <laughs> Some of those high fades are real, real high. Uh, we are forced to play the World Cup favorites in the Irk. Maybe one could argue that Andy Farrell is emotionally abusing his son. I'm clutching at straws here. Island good. Yeah, everything. And that's the Six Nations done. It was the first year I really followed it as closely as I do the rugby championship and it did not disappoint. The games were entertaining, the tries were hype and the stakes for the World Cup are only getting higher and higher. News. Downvote, downvote, downvote. Now that the fine dining of the Six Nations is done with the Michelin star Irish champs, we all get to fall back into the corn syrup vats of club competitions around the world. Fill me up. The Chiefs and Brumbies currently set the pace in Super Rugby. In England, the Saracens and Sale Sharks are sitting pretty at the top. In South Ireland, Wales, Africa, crowds are still enjoying watching teams get chucked into the Leinster Volcano. 
All of that is joined by the MLR, the Super Rugby Americas, the Super Sixes, Japan's League One, the Curry Cup here in South Africa, and the Super Hype Varsity Cup. Also, don't forget to mention the Women's Bloody Six Nations is about to start. Someone help me! Finally, Razor Robertson has been appointed as the All Blacks head coach from after the World Cup. So, international teams enjoy winning while you can. Doom is coming. And doom has come for this week's rugby update. I will see you all next week after Benetton's easy win over the Lions. We're back to that again. Bye.